Welcome back. The deciding vote on health care reform just might belong to a member of the U.S. Senate whose wife has made a killing from the health care industry. You think I'm kidding? Just last week, Indiana Democrat Evan Vide dropped a bit of a bombshell that wasn't widely noticed. By hinted that he might balk when it comes time to break an expected Republican filibuster. If he doesn't like the package that's now being crafted, in other words, he could deny the bill's supporters the votes that they need to move forward on health care reform regarding a public option and other measures. That means that he would help Senate Republicans bottle the thing up. Stop it, essentially. His one single vote could be that important. My question is, can Evan By be impartial on health care? When, as of last year, his wife Susan, who sits on the boards of one, two, three, no, wait, four corporate boards in the healthcare industry, among them WellPoint, the nation's largest commercial health insurer, Equilar, an executive compensation research firm, says that WellPoint paid Susan by close to two million dollars from 2006 to 2008 just to sit on the board. Some estimates, 2.1 million dollars, all told. Healthcare companies have paid Senator Bayh's wife some $2.1 million. That's all together. That's putting them all together, just to be clear. And here's the thing. Most of these gigs she didn't even get until her husband won election to the Senate. She got the gigs after he got the big job. What does that tell you? Dan Carpenter is an op-ed columnist with the Indianapolis Star, which is the senator's, uh, Senator Bayh's home state of Indiana, of course. He's not the only one writing about this, but there are uh, a lot of voices being uh, raised about this. Dan, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Putting aside for a moment how he is going to vote, forget about whether he goes left, right, in between, whatever. Just the facts of the case his wife's situation with these companies. Isn't that a clear case of a conflict of interest that you or I as journalists or just about anyone else in, in just about any profession would have to disclose to their boss and then their boss would say, you know what, take a step back, recuse yourself from making a decision on this? Isn't that the way it would work anywhere else? Well, we're grateful that it is being disclosed and uh, it's so blatant and so open and the senator has been uh, uh, so insistent that it has absolutely nothing to do with his vote that I think all we can do is just sit back and scratch our heads. The voters certainly have every reason to wonder whether it's an investment. Uh, uh, you know, again, but it, but it's but it's just it's just laughable to me, and I I hate to use that word. I don't I don't mean to sound mean, but it just seems laughable to me that someone could have two million dollars poured into their a certain company or a certain type of company, and then argue that oh that's not going to affect my vote one way or another. I don't care. I mean, and and by the way, let's let's be fair to the senator. Uh, he sent us these notes today. He says his voter record shows he's put the people of Indiana first. He says he's voted against big health in the past. He voted for the Democrats' prescription drug plan because he thought it would be more efficient than the industry back plan. He voted for the Democrats' bill of uh, rights that was strongly opposed by the drug companies. I is he right? Does he have a voting record that says, I don't care what companies my wife's on and how much money we're getting into our account from those big companies? He'll never have a vote this big as uh, some of those... Uh uh, uh, instances where the Democratic senator did vote with the Democrats uh, were of, you know, questionable level of controversy. I think that uh, drug bill was going to be a, a bonanza no matter what. Uh, the, the question in front of us is, with this historic vote coming mm -hmm. and his expression of opposition, even at one point last week of, of joining a filibuster, against his own party uh, has to raise questions about the financial ties he and his wife have with the industry and the propriety and the possibility of a conflict of interest by the way he goes on to tell us he's been calling us all morning since he found out that we were going to go with this story and we invite the senator to come on and talk to us tomorrow if he'd like to give us his perspective on this conversation you and i are having he said that uh, for months he said he has an open mind on the public option and as to his wife he says she's qualified talented professional woman who works hard to achieve her professional success and her career has no bearing whatsoever on the senator his legislative activities and does, does he have an open mind on, on the public option or is he is he pretty much already uh, signposting where he's going on this thing well my bias is toward a real public option and toward uh, 
a, uh, uh, an expansion of Medicare, which I think the more progressive Democrats are behind. And most and, Americans, 62% of the Americans. Uh, and most, uh, in, in the most recent poll, I saw a, a majority of uh, people in this very conservative state. Hmm. Uh, this is uh, the progressive Democrat uh, uh, objective, and this is what the healthcare industry wants to stop. Uh, this is what represents a threat to their profits. And uh, he's made it clear that uh, if he would vote for any kind of a public option, it would be uh, a diluted one, a, a is, is compromised there, is, one. Um, is, is, I just got to stop you. I'm just wondering, because I want our viewers to know. And, and if, if it is, it's good. If not, we just want to be fair to this, to this senator. Is, is there an unmistakable quid pro quo in terms of uh the money that she's getting from these companies in other words is is there no arguing that she's getting this money from these companies is she also getting stocks or are they getting stocks from wellpoint or any of these companies and how important is that to this decision you can't make that pronouncement um if 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 they want to insist that uh uh, that this is simply her separate professional career and he wants to insist that uh, he allows no access to himself by the industry that's given him a half million dollars mm -hmm. then there's no definitively contradicting that it's hmm. just very obvious that yeah uh, that there are ties here and there are, uh, are uh, uh, Entities, industries, and, and political entities, and and personal connections that uh, are going to influence the outcome of politics. If nothing else, he's conflicted. I mean, I can't see how anybody could say that he's not. But again, we we extend the invitation for him to come here. He says that that seeming conflict of interest doesn't affect his voting record one way or another. If those 2.1 million dollars that flowed into his household income that he and his wife spare, uh, I imagine, uh, spend together doesn't affect his voting record. Well, that's that's for him to say and for the American people to buy or not buy. And once again, the invitation stands. Dan Carpenter is with the uh, paper in Indianapolis. He's been uh, taking us through this. Thank you, sir. We'll get you back. Thank you, sir. All right.